this edition of Head to Head, we have two bikes that both Dill and I are very excited about. The Mondrake Cardoon XR and the Cannondale Motera SL. It may look like these bikes don't have a lot in common, but do they? They're both mullets. They have head angles that can be within 0.1 degrees of each other. They have the same 600 watts of peak power and they're both low weight, but it's how they get to that low weight. That's the real story here. Man, we can't wait to get into this one. So let's go. All right, we are at the start of the trail. Let's get going. Wait a second. Simon, you've got Blister Plus injury insurance, don't you? As much as I wreck myself, come <laughs> on. <laughs> of course I have Blister Plus, $25,000 of accident coverage and zero deductible, yeah. Great, so do I. We never ride without Blister Plus, neither should you. Go to blisterreview.com, get yourself covered. Let's go. We've made it to a nice, steep, consistent section of double track here. And as Simon mentioned earlier, these two bikes have the same 600 watt peak power. Simon and I are about the same weight. We're about similar fitness. You know, we can produce the same amount of power as humans. So I think this would be a really good chance to let these motors shine and see which one comes out on top. What do you say? I'm ready. They're, they're pretty close in weight. The bikes are as well. That's so true. it's a fairly even playing field kind of but yeah. let's, uh, let's find out because i i know there's going to be a, a bit of a spoiler in here yeah let's do it <laughs> i'm kind of out of breath yeah i feel like we're pretty equally out of breath but that race didn't feel very equal <laughs> no it didn't, didn't. <laughs> oh man they both have the same peak 600 watts of power yeah but the Candel motor sl with the shimano ep801 motor yeah. has 85 newton meters of torque and the mondraker xr with the bosch sx has 55 newton meters so i think that is where where the difference is for sure the 600 watts definitely doesn't tell the whole story torque is very noticeable especially when you start from a stop and it's what yeah. pulls you out of the hole yep and gets that acceleration and yeah the top end is more where the uh, watts come into play yeah it was it, it was done for me in the first 20 <laughs> feet i'd say and yeah. then i sort of felt like i was losing less ground exactly in the, in the last bit of the race i know that's that's a good point because yeah. that motor needs to rpms you need to be spun up to a higher cadence to yeah. get the 600 watts out of it yeah well this one feels like you could log it and have the power power right away yeah absolutely yeah. this thing is asking me to pedal at you know 80 to 90 rpms all the time which is definitely a bit higher than i would naturally do right and and that bike you can i feel like pedal with a more natural cadence that you would on an unpowered bike and it still delivers you know as much power as it can good test yeah that was a good test let's keep on going up right. shall we let's do it <laughs> Well, we made it. We're at the top, Tea Cali Ridge Trail here in Crested Butte. Got the iconic Pearl Pass in the background. And Simon, this feels like a pretty good place to stop and chat about what we've learned about these bikes so far. What do you say? Oh, this is so beautiful. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Yeah, I'll take seats. All right, so we switched back and forth a couple times on these bikes on our way up. And Simon and I have also been testing both of these bikes for the last couple of months. We're testing both of these bikes in a large and the geometry numbers are actually quite similar. The Motera SL has a 77 degree C tube angle, whereas the Dune XR has a 77.1 degree C tube angle. The Motera has a 470 millimeter reach. The Dune XR has a 480 millimeter reach. And as you mentioned in the intro, their head tube angles are also 0.1 degree off of each other with the Motera SL having a 63.7 degree head tube angle and the Dune XR having a 63.6. And that's with the Motera SL in the steeper of the two positions. If you put it in the slacker position, you're at 62.5 degrees, which is really quite slack. The Motera with its tighter 470 millimeter reach, I feel like I'm a bit more upright on that bike 
feels more comfortable on longer, flatter roads. Whereas the Dune XR with its 480 millimeter reach, I feel like I'm a little further on the front of the bike. And I feel like I appreciate that when I'm going up steeper stuff, I feel like I can get more weight on the front wheel. But on those flatter roads, you are in a little sportier position. For sure. Yeah. The geometry is very similar, but I think the suspension is really where these two bikes differ the most on the way up. Would you agree? Yes, the suspension is something that is quite different on them, but so is the uh, the motor power. Yeah. And that's what gives them different personalities on this climb. The riding position to me is very comfortable on the Motera SL and the Dune XR. Mm -hmm. And I um, I think they have similar manners when it comes to climbing. Yeah. But, you know, there's a big difference in suspension and, like I just said, the output, especially specifically the torque of the motors. Yeah, the motors are are pretty different. They're pretty hard to compare directly to one another just, just based on how, how different they are and how much more power the Motera has versus the Dune. Whereas I do think the Dune does give smoother output. I think it does a better job at matching the rider's output on the bike, whereas the Shimano EP801 motor on the Cannondale Motera SL can feel a bit more binary sometimes where if I'm on the pedals, it's just kind of going as fast as it can all the time. And if you let off, the bike lets off pretty significantly as well. The Dune XR has a really bomber rear tire. Let's just kind of throw that into the mix. Too. It really that does, yeah. DH casing, max drip tire. That just feels really glued to the ground. Did you find the Dune XR to be more manageable when it got really steep? In some ways I did. I, I said I will say, yeah, and especially just on that climb, I think I had more moments where I had to get off the bike on the Motera. Not because it was lacking in power, but mostly just because I couldn't keep the damn thing on the trail. <laughs> yeah, you were mentioning this, and it is true that there is a lot more power on tap, torque specifically again, yeah. on the um, Motera SL. And you do have to manage your pedaling inputs so you don't overwhelm the back end of the bike. Yeah. Overall, I'd say they were fairly closely matched when you, when you don't factor in the power, the climbing position, mm -hmm. and how well they tackle the really steep technical stuff. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's a pretty uh, significant battery level discrepancy here, but uh, I think we should maybe touch on that later in the ride when it's all said and done. I think so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's start heading down. What do you say? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Check it out. This is a superb descent. It really is. And how about the dirt today, huh? Oh my God. Incredible. Really good. Uh, and, and really good testing area for these bikes. Yeah. Uh, because it throws a lot at you. It's got quartering. It's got steep, chunky stuff. It's got drops. It's everything I think that these bikes are both really, really good at. Each of these bikes kind of shined in different areas. I, I really liked how much traction the Dune XR had in those steep, slippery, chunky spots. This thing just stays glued to the trail. It's got so much traction available for when you need to throw on the brakes in these situations. And it's just got so much confidence that it gives yeah. you to just rail through these sections, knowing that you're just completely in, in control and with the trail. I'd say that I don't think I found the traction limit on this bike, oh, the Dune XR that is. I, I just didn't. Yeah. I don't know if I'm riding it fast enough, honestly. I think it's <laughs> asking me to ride it faster and I'm telling it that I'm trying. Yeah, okay, <laughs> it's not just me then. Yeah I, yeah, I agree. The Motera SL, I think it was a better fit for those flowy, fun, faster sections of trail where you had more opportunities to get it in the air. You mentioned these bikes are within two pounds of each other. That's right, they are. Both in the mid 40s. The Dune XR is 43.6 pounds. And the Motera SL here is 45.6 pounds. Pretty astonishingly light for a full power e-bike. That's right. But I also found that despite being two pounds heavier, the Motera to me felt more playful and it felt easier to get into the air. 100% agree with you there. Yeah. Absolutely. The Dune XR, when I 
put it on the scale, I was expecting it to be heavier than what the number on the scale read. It really rides <laughs> it really heavier, was. doesn't it? No, it really does. Yeah. It's not a it's not a, a dig on the bike. It's just because it's so planted and the suspension is so composed, it doesn't really want to come off the ground as much. It, yeah, it doesn't. And I think that's, that's really good in a lot of ways, right? When you're going through these really technical, rooty sections, it it has so much traction that's awesome and in other ways you know in those smaller jibs where it really does require a pretty proper bunny hop to get in the air yeah yeah the dune definitely is is harder to get airborne for sure and is less playful in that regard i feel like when i'm doing that I, there's barely any light under my tires no yeah it's <laughs> it's 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 kind of a i wouldn't say it's underwhelming sometimes but maybe disappointing where like oh i really thought i pulled for that the confidence you get riding this bike just every bit of train you look at it seems like it doesn't have any issue. It's going to have any issue with it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't think it's, uh, I'm capable of pushing it hard enough to really make it come alive sometimes. I feel like I'm holding the bike back. When you get these class one e-bikes past their 20 mile an hour cutoff uh, limit yes. for the motor assist, it's usually the case that these lighter assist bikes, such as ones equipped with the Bosch SX motor system here on the Dune XR. And, and I'll say on that note that Bosch does claim considerably less mechanical resistance in that SX motor than their own CX motors past the point of cutoff. Yeah, I thought the EP801 system wasn't much harder to pedal past that cutoff limit than, than here on the Dune, and quite frankly, I'm not sure that has much to do with the motor itself, but maybe the bikes themselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It, I think the spec on this bike, the suspension, the amount of suspension, yeah. that's going to eat up some of that efficiency past the cutoff point, and it maybe really levels the playing field between these two bikes, because Past that 20, uh, I was expecting to pull away with you, pull away from you when I was on the dune, but what wasn't happening because I was sticking to myself that has less mechanical resistance. Yeah, but. I totally agree. And that, that could certainly be the case, but I think the increase in suspension, the more plush feel of the Dune XR and that heavier, grippier rear tire, I think kind of levels the playing field in a lot of ways. Whereas the suspension on the Motera SL feels a bit more efficient and responsive under pedaling. And I, I think, you know, the motors probably do have a bit of a difference here, but it's kind of evened out by the bikes themselves. They are both very different suspension designs. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Motera SL has a flex day. It's crazy. At 150 millimeters of travel and does not feel like it one bit. No, <laughs> flex day on this bike, that's something that you're used to seeing on, you know, World Cup cross country bikes where, you know, hitting that mid 20s, sub mid 20s weight limit is a, is a big goal but I wouldn't say this feel like a cross country bike at all. No, it doesn't, not one bit, but yeah. it does store a little bit of energy and it feels more poppy because of that, I think. Yeah. And you feel it in there, but it's not harsh over small bumps. It's got great sensitivity. It's really well done. It's really impressive how they pulled it off. For sure. Really yeah. So impressive. Props yeah. to Cannondale for that. Absolutely. Let's finish off this amazing descent and then wrap this up when we get down to the bottom. What do you say? Sounds good. Let's do it. Fantastic. Let's go. Oh. Now, getting uh, this head-to-head, -head, I talked about the low weight being the real story and how Mondraker and Candale's vastly different approach really defines the personality of these bikes. Mm -hmm. And I think that also really defines who these bikes are for. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of for very different types of riders, don't you think? Yeah, I, I definitely say so. Uh, with the Dune XR here, this thing just really feels at home and steep gnarly fast single track and whether you're accessing it via bike park i've done that plenty and really found myself enjoying the dune at the bike park here at crested butte or if you have those winch and plummet style trails right in your backyard and the, the mondraker just provides excellent traction for all that i think you and i both agree that we did not find the top end of this bike no we didn't. and it really just feels like a downhill bike that has a motor in it that lets you get to the top a lot quicker than you know say an enduro bike very much so. Mm -hmm. What's really unique about the Dune XR is that you don't often see a light assist motor in a bike that has 180 millimeters of travel in the front mm -hmm. and 165 and we're not alone a coil spring and a DH casing tire and all yeah. the other things it has going for it. So, I mean, it's really unique in that regard, isn't it? Yeah, it's super impressive how Mondraker was able to pull off that 43.6 pounds on this bike. We're really not quite sure how they did it, but uh, I think we're really happy with the end result, which, yeah, like you mentioned, is a, 
light assist bike that really just blew us away on on the way down whereas when we got into the you know more mellow sections of trail where we were doing a lot of pumping you know going around those fast corners and whatnot I really found myself preferring the more dynamic, responsive, and playful feel of the Motera SL. It's definitely a more versatile e-bike in a lot of ways. I think, yeah, folks who, who like to get in the air a lot or just, you know, want something that, that feels a little bit more alive under them will really like the ride of the Motera SL. You should make a distinction here. Neither one of these bikes are a bike I would choose for big adventure EMTB rides. Yeah. Four or five hour rides trying to ride in high power mode as much as possible. Yeah. No, neither one of these two. This this is a very limiting thing here. Now, it mm -hmm. should be noted also that they do have range extender options for both of these bikes. Mm -hmm. But as it is without the range extender, I think you're out of power. I definitely am out of power. <laughs> you're out of yeah. power. <laughs> And I can't really tell you exactly how much is left on this because it doesn't give you exact battery percentage, which is mm -hmm. something that I wish it did. I will say with these two bikes, you know, they're they're each designed for a pretty different use case. There is some overlap between them, um, but in their respective categories and for what they are designed to do, I think they both do it exceptionally well. Dylan, in our last head-to-head, -head, we had a clear winner. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not so sure we should have a winner here because they're both so good, but yet so different what do you think yeah i agree I, as cheesy as it sounds i think they're both winners and the fact that for what they're meant to do they both do it really well i think personally just the trails that i'm usually riding and the length and kind of intensity of my e-bike rides i tend to be preferring the motera sl for those um but i could definitely see myself also having the dune xr in slightly different circumstances uh yeah same here mm -hmm. i don't have this the trails to really push the uh, Dune XR. Mm -hmm. I just don't have it. And mm -hmm. I think for where I live and the kind of riding I do, the Motera SL is a much better choice for me. Mm -hmm. But I know there's riders out there that um, will absolutely really gravitate towards a Dune XR. Yeah, totally agree. So in this head-to-head -head video, we were just comparing two bikes, but in our deep dive reviews on our website, we are comparing one bike to several other bikes in its class and you can become a Blister Plus member to get our excellent outdoor injury insurance, $25,000 of coverage per incident with a $0 deductible. People like Simon are definitely people who need Blister Plus, people like me, and probably people like you need Blister Plus. So go to blisterreview.com and get yourself signed up. And you can also enjoy all your other perks with Blister Plus, which includes access to our deep dive reviews, personalized gear recommendations, exclusive discounts, and so much more. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, leave comments, questions, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next head to head.